All right, we have a portfolio move to tell you about Josh Brown adding to Pfizer, something he says is one of the best opportunities in the entire market right now. Tell us more. Yeah, I mean, this is very far away from what people are doing. Uh, this stock is on the this stock is on the 52 week low list. It's actually at a 11 year low. We haven't seen it trade at these prices since December of 2013. What's happening here in my in my view is very simple. There's just no great near term catalyst for this stock. And as a result, people are coming out of it and looking for other things to do that might be more rewarding in the shorter term. And from my perspective, that sets this up perfectly because I'm looking to be an investor here. I'm not looking for any kind of short term pop in the stock. Uh, I don't even know if I'm done buying it yet, but I added to my position by about 50 percent yesterday uh, as it was making a new 52 week low. The people that watch this stock, uh, uh, the, the show, know that I'm usually looking for stocks that are closer to a 52 week high and are exhibiting strength. But I think that this is a very special situation. COVID just absolutely wrecked this company. They went all in on Paxlovid and on the, and on the vaccines. Uh, then the disease became endemic. Nobody needs the pills. Nobody cares about the shots. And their revenue was just demolished. That's the thing, though. That's why the stock's in a 60% uh, 60 drawdown, paying a six and a, almost 6.5% dividend yield. And they made an acquisition of CGen, which I think is going to have huge potential in the coming years for oncology drugs. So uh, this is a stock that's been around, a company that's been around for 175 years. They've had other issues like this. People were worried about uh, Viagra coming off patent in 2017. They got through that. Before that, people were worried about Lipitor in 2011. They always find a way to rebuild revenue growth and, and reorient the company. I don't think this time will be any different. So I am a buyer under 30, and we'll, we'll see what happens in the coming years. All right, it's getting a move uh, as we're having this conversation. You have a comment here? Yeah, hey, Josh, you know, I'm sure you're not surprised. Pfizer is something that certainly comes on my radar screen uh, a lot. I'll bet on Surratt's, too. I, I see what you're seeing. I agree with the fundamental picture. I think you're going to make money. The thing that's holding me back is that dividend yield. That's a lot of their free cash flow that they're paying off uh, in dividends. Does that leave them enough for R&D? Are you worried that maybe that high yield is signaling that it's uh, too high? I'm really glad you I'm really glad you asked that question in, in a series of recent presentations. Not only have they committed to substantial R&D, um, but in addition, last year they froze the buyback. So this used to be a dividend plus buyback story shrinking the float. They stopped doing that. The, the CGen acquisition is massive, very expensive. They're going to have to deleverage the balance sheet to get back to buybacks. But I do believe they'll continue the dividend, and then I think they'll add this new leg to the story when it's appropriate, uh, going back to buybacks. And if you look at the history of shareholder return here, they've done a really good job historically with that capital allocation decision. So I think they can do all of these things at once. Uh, I don't think the street is really giving them that much credit that they will. Um, so maybe that's why there's an opportunity if, if I end up being right. All right. Well, as we said, uh, stock's on the move, and, and we'll continue to watch it from uh, negative or flat line to uh, a nice little move by about 1%.